Uh, hello everyone, in this video we'll show you how to gain reactivity by boiling in an RBMK reactor. So I will use the Ichi Avocado demo version, I will provide you all the files and initial states you need in the description below. If you are interested in this simulator or other nuclear reactor simulators, check my play playlist called Nuclear Reactor Simulators. So I will open the initial state 1000 PSIGs. <clears throat> And another thing I will do, and this thanks to a user that told me, I thought that in this demo version you could not change to a metric system, but you, yes, it's possible. You need to go to this window, like the time window, and in options, change to metric. And now it's in metric. So I will use it in metric because it's more accurate to the reality of the Soviet Union. None of these reactors was never uh, built in a imperial uh, unit system country. So, as you know, this reactor has some controllability problems. The more famously known is the effect you get when you push the AZ-5 button. And most of the control rods are outside the core. Because the first part of the control rod is made of a graphite water displacer. The during the first seconds after pressing the AZ-5 button in these conditions, you get a spike in power before having the expected decrease of power. This is because the operator is being run outside the operational range or the range in which you can have controllability. The design of this reactor says you need at least 15% or the equivalent of 15% of the control rods inserted into the core at all time during operation. And this is to assure controllability, to make sure that whatever you do, either withdraw or insert control rods, they will have the expected effect on reactivity. Because these graphite tips have exactly the contrary uh, effect on reactivity than the boron uh, compound of which the central part of the absorber rods is made of. Why this uh, graphite, graphite displacer? Well, this is to increase the power of the control rods. So their movement has more power, or the difference between being inserted or withdrawn has more power mm, due to these uh, displacers. These displacers also allow to reach a critical design with a less with a smaller size and with a less enrichment of the fuel. So it makes a more economical reactor. In the first generation, uh, which uh, consisted of 1,693 fuel channels and 179 control rods, uh, this reactor could run with almost an, an enriched uranium, so natural uranium. But later it was uh, updated because of an accident that happened related to this controllability issue. So while I'm talking, we see that the remaining fuel is decreasing. Now it's at 36%. So before encountering this controllability issue, I will open cheat engine to fix the fuel burn up. So I should be quickly because we are at the edge of controllability at this moment. And I will open the 25 channels plus Xenon, no merge, and I will start I will decrease power set point to by half point to be safe against meltdown. And now I will fix all channels. We are really in the edge of controllability now. And I will tell you why in one second. Okay, we are safe now. I fix all the fuel burn up in all the channels. This is not realistic. This is, uh, as the name implies, this is cheating. So that's why I use cheat engine. So. Now the reactor is not consuming fuel and the remaining fuel will stay at 35%. We see some other abnormality to this jumping hot well level. This is because the three uh, pumps pumping from the hot well are on and we only need two. So there is one that is switching on and off continuously to keep the level, which is not good. So I will switch off the third pump. Okay, it's off. I will leave this here just in case. I will also turn on the polisher too because conductivity is a bit high and put out the polisher one and regenerate it. Okay, that's good. 
So coming back to controllability, because you have the graphite, graphite displacers in the top and bottom of the absorber rods, what happens is that you only have absorber material in the 64% of the central length of the rods. It means you only have the expected effect when you input or output rods that are within this range. So if you have a rod which is totally withdrawn and you start inputting it or inserting it into the core, until the first 1.25 meters of graphite displacer has been inserted, you will not start having the negative reactivity increase that you are looking for. So that's why the design of this reactor states that at least the equivalent of 15 control rods must be inserted at all time during the operation of the reactor. This is to keep controllability, so the action of, on the control rods has the expected outcome on reactivity. So what happens if you have less than the equivalent of 15 control rods inserted? Let's say, let's say you have only 7, which is the configuration in which they put the reactor in Chernobyl 1986 before the accident. If you only have seven rods inserted, in the eventual case of an emergency and you, when you press the scram button or AZ5 button, you will have so many rods that are being inserted, inserting only graphite tip during few seconds, that the eventual spike of power will get out of control and you will get out of controllability before the boron, which is the part that is supposed to decrease reactivity, even has the opportunity to enter the reactor. So that's why this 15 control rod value. So in which situation are we now? We're in a situation in which all the control rods are at a position of 7.6% inserted. So even if we have a remaining fuel of 35%, we are at the edge of losing controllability. At a bit less of this number, like 7.4 or so, you cannot gain reactivity by withdrawing rods because what you are withdrawing is graphite. So you are withdrawing expecting to increase reactivity, but actually you decrease reactivity because you are withdrawing moderator from the reactor core. So that's why I went very quickly to switch off well burn up using cheat engine. So now uh, the reactor is not going to stall because it loses reactivity because well burn up. So basically there is nothing now changing reactivity. Everything is stable, so this would stay at 7.6%. But what can I do if one want to increase reactivity? But I lost the controllability by control rods. So there is only one thing left. One is to insert fresh fuel into the reactor. We will not talk about this now. We are not refueling in this video. So the second thing is to use boiling. Because this is a positive uh, void coefficient reactor. It means the higher the voiding, the higher the reactivity. So we see now voiding is at 18 and 17% in the loop 1 and loop 2 of the reactor. Loop 1 and loop 2 are the two halves of the reactor. So if we split it vertically into half, one is the loop 1, uh, the one the loop 2, and they are totally separated. You could actually run them independently. Actually, there is interaction because neutrons generated in one part can, can cross to other parts, so the reactivity uh, of the two sums up somehow. But um, hydraulically, hydraulically and thermically, you could run them independently. I'm not sure if you would reach criticality easily, only with one half. Mm. But it's possible because, you know, I will just give you some data about the core. The core is a cylinder of 11.8 11 11 meters diameter and 7 meters height. This is made of 1,700 1, tons of graphite, which is the moderator. And through this moderator, there are uh, channels that contain either fuel or absorber rods that are the channels in which the nuclear reaction occurs. Actually, not 100% of the reaction. I think like 12% of the heat is produced in the moderator itself, but then is dissipated into the channel to be conducted to the drum where it boils and it creates a steam, etc. Well, it starts to boil in the reactor, but you get the point. So, 
uh, what I oh, sorry I lost uh, I lost the thread of my words. So this core is surrounded by a graphite reflector to further increase reactivity. So you have this huge cylinder of 1,700 tons of graphite. And then you have a layer of, of graphite in the top, bottom, and two sides. The top and bottom have a half meter thickness, and the perimetral has one meter thickness. So this is not intended to act as a moderator, but actually it also acts as a moderator. But this is called a reflector. So the neutrons that escape the reactor, part of them are expected to come back by being moderated in this layer of graphite outside the core of the reactor and then eventually coming back to the reactor. Not all of them, but uh, an important part which uh, positively uh, affects reactivity. So if you happen to cut this reactor in two halves, um, I'm not really sure if it would be easy or even possible to reach uh, criticality because you would be missing this reflector in the symmetry axis and yeah, probably maybe there is not the critical mass to, to reach criticality and you would need to increase the enrichment of the fuel. Okay, so you are at this position in which you are very, very close to, to lose criticality because you are, at this point, if you withdraw rods, you are withdrawing moderators, so you are decreasing reactivity. So what you can do is to increase boiling. So how to increase boiling? I will open the dialogues of loop 1 and loop 2. I will put them here. Here and here. So <clears throat> I will open also the schematic. So you see loop 1 and loop 2 are these three pumps in each side of the reactor. And they are all red because they are all online, on, online now. I'm not sure how realistic this is because in reality there were, or there are, well, there were because all RBMKs are the commission now. So there were four MCPs per loop, three for normal operation at nominal power and one in reserve in case some of the MCP trips, you can immediately turn on some of the others which are connected to the bus or to the, well, yes, to the bus, but this bus can be either connected to the turbine or to the outside grid. So they were like in standby, so you can immediately connect them if some of the other trip to keep controllability. So you don't have an unexpected critical runaway due to boiling feedback loop, feedback loop. So in this case, you have only three and we ran the three. So I'm not sure if it would be more realistic to run two out of the three, because in reality, they run three out of four. But anyway, we are running the six of them now. So what I will do now is to progressively turn off MCPs and see how we can increase uh, boiling and the road position. Uh, we, we gain road position. So we will gain some margin uh, regarding controllability with road position. So I expect this 7.7 to increase. So to go to 10, 12%, something like that. Okay, we'll close that. I will, just to be safe, I will decrease power set point by half point, so we'll be at around 99% because I expect the neutron flux to spike a little bit when I trip one pump. So I will start by one side and then to go to the other side. I will acknowledge this here. So we have the warning of too many rods removed. This according to the design parameters. So now uh, the controllability as it is designed in this reactor, it cannot be assured anymore. So let's see if we can recover it just by boiling. I will switch off the pump 3 of the loop 1. And just to verify it's loop 1, it looks like. Yeah, and loop 1 voiding increases to 21%. I will switch off the pump 3 from loop 2. Let's check the neutron flux. And neutron flux just increased 0.1%. Okay, I will close the outlet valve. And the road position increased every just at very tiny bit. So let's go with the second pump. I will switch off the second pump of the loop one. 
neutron flux increases to 0.3%. And you see reactor level had quite a dip. I would expect if you increase boiling, increase reactor level, but you are also decreasing the heat transfer to the drum, so you are decreasing flow. You can see it here, drum steam flow. So the, the result is a dip in the reactor level. Okay, I will switch off the pump too. And now you see the disparity. We had a voiding of 18% and 33% in the two halves. Okay, and I will close the outlet valves. And now we have a voiding of 30%. So we started at around 17-18% and we increased to 30%. Road position now is at 8.2%. So we increase road position like in 1%. Now we are in a delicate position because this reactor cannot run with without recirculation pumps and more than 40% of voiding is considered uh, high voiding so I will try to trip one pump I will further decrease positive point maybe to 97.97% to be a bit safe and let's see I will try just with one half and be ready to connect it back if the voiding increases too much. We switch it off. Voiding is 40%, 46, 54. And I don't have time to connect it back. Okay, I damage, work claddings, reactor tripped, neutron flux. You see neutron flux increase, and then there was automatic scrum because we still had an important quantity of graphite inside the core. It, didn't, it did not have the catastrophic effect of the AZ-5 in 1986 Chernobyl, but we were close to that. So to be in that extreme, you nearly need to be outside the range of controllability. When you are still with 8% of the roads inserted, you see, you just have a very slightly increase of, of neutron flux. And what happened is when I was trying to to close the outlet valve because this pump will not turn on unless you have the outlet valve um, open. What I should have done is to have the pump number two ready with the outlet valve closed and then open the, the outlet valve, but I didn't think it will be so fast. So you saw a nominal power, the voiding start increasing and then everything trip and I damage like I see half of the foil cladding are destroyed. I, I say for cladding, but probably even channels are ruptured. So um, we got many alarms. I will try to see. Yeah, there's high radiation levels in containment. So very likely channels are ruptured and there's a big uh, release of radiation in the containment. So it looks like this simulator is not made to simulate accidents, so it's not sure that the automatic scrum could have worked. It's possible that the rupturing of some channels uh, avoided the insertion of the total insertion of the absorber rod, so it's possible that this could have gone to a very large critical runaway. But what the simulation shows is that the neutron flux never went much above 100%, maybe 101%, and then it was uh, successfully shut down. But as I said, this simulator is not made for accidents, so we are not really sure if this would have been the reality. But I was 
really doing a thing which is never done in reality, which is try to turn off all the three pumps just for the sake to see if I could gain controllability. Okay, I hope you like this video. See you in the next video. Bye.